Eric Fontanez, MMAWeekly.com, here with Scott Coker. Tell me about this event. How do you see the lightweight title figuring itself out? I mean, you know, we, what we wanted to do was to see how this event shook out and see what happened. And, and you know, Gilbert took some damage in this fight. I don't think he's going to be ready to fight for a while. And, um, you know, in this business, things change overnight. And so we're going to be out there looking for some more talent to bring in. And, like, uh, you know, we were thinking about uh, the fight between um, Justin Wilcox and Fedor to see uh, maybe that might be a step up for the next guy. But I'll tell you another guy that comes to my mind, and, you know, he should fight one more fight if he wins is uh, Josh Thompson. Those guys are one and one. And you know what? There should be a rubber match at some point this year for Gilbert. But you know what? We're going to keep building our lightweight division and just like we are our other divisions, uh, except for the heavyweights. And then, uh, you know, we're going to put some great fights on in 2012. I was talking to Josh. He says, you know what? I'll, I'll get one fight and let me fight that guy. And I said, yeah, you know, we'll put you. and he's like, look, tell Gilbert I won six rounds to his four in our, four, in our two fights. So I'm up by, uh, by uh, two rounds. And so I haven't said that to Gilbert, but uh, I said, well, you tell Gilbert that. He goes, oh, I have to fight. I'm going to call him and tell him that. So, you know, that, that, that would be another amazing fight. But, you know, Gilbert lost to him uh, three years ago, then beat him two years ago. And uh, maybe, maybe their match uh, some, somewhere down the line could work. And how much did Carlos Fedor impress you tonight? Yeah, I mean, just, Justin Wilcox is no joke. I mean, that guy is a beast. And, uh, you know, fight ended so quickly. It was really hard to see, you know, <clears throat> you know, where, where his development is. But uh, we're going to get a couple more fights. But, uh, you know, he's going to start stepping up his competition. Now he's going to start fighting the big boys. And just based off of your impression from the, uh, from the women's featherweight title fight, how scary is Cyborg going forward? She is truly the Mike Tyson of female MMA. And, uh, what, 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 what makes you put her in the, same, in the same context as Mike Tyson? What about her? She is just coming and knocking people out. That's it. Simple you know, and plain. That's simple. And you know who told me that? It wasn't myself saying, oh, she's the Mike Tyson. It was Showtime. All the executives of Showtime said, she's the Mike Tyson of mixed martial arts, of female mixed martial arts. And we love her. So, you know what? That, you know, you're going to see her fight and, and uh, uh, a lot in 2012. I don't think she took any damage tonight. And she'd be probably, probably be ready to fight in a couple months. Who would you think is best suited to test her next? From your personal uh, well, opinion, said that maybe he should fight her next. But uh, <laughs> I wasn't. I was. I said, Are you sure, Gilbert? No, I'm joking. Uh, he did say that though at the press conference. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Um, there's a couple girls in mind, and, uh, and anybody, so, anybody specific. You know what? Um, Sean and I are going to talk about it next week. Uh, but there's girls in, uh, all over the country. I mean, not our country, but all over the planet actually. That um, there's some talent in Russia, some talent in Eastern Bloc countries, there's some talent in Holland. Uh, and we're going to bring them here. We're going to bring all those girls here to have them fight the, our, our champions. And, and, you know, when you think about Rhonda, who's this amazing talent, who has, uh, you know, had, had the experience of all the Olympics, that to help her, you know, I think become successful in mixed martial arts. Uh, but I think she should stay at 135 or go down to 135, fight, um, fight uh, Misha Tate at some point next year. Let that fight happen. And, uh, and then... Uh, you know, if she's continued to become successful, then maybe she should move up and fight Cyborg because that's she says she wants to do that. Rhonda told me personally, I want to do, fight them all. I want to fight everybody, including Cyborg. So I think the fans will get to see, uh, you know, all the fights that, uh, that they, they would like to see in uh, the female division in Strike Force. Well, let's talk about the heavyweights for a second. There, you, going forward, you're, you've got Daniel Cormier and uh, Josh Barnett fighting in the final. I do believe that fight will happen uh, before the end of the first quarter. March, is it? Yeah, probably before the end of March. Uh, but the location hasn't been 100% locked down yet, so I think it's premature. But that fight will happen. And then the winner will fight a top-ranked heavyweight uh, sometime maybe in the, in the, you know, maybe summer, late summer. Uh, and then, uh, you know, that, that, I think that puts an exclamation point on our tournament and our efforts to build our heavyweight division, which... You know, we started in February. I think we had a heavyweight division unlike anybody. You know, it was it was an amazing heavyweight division. You know, and then Fedor. Who knew Fedor was going to lose three fights? Who knew Alice was going to get hurt? You know, before uh, the next round and couldn't fight in the elimination fight in September. So, you know, things happen, situations happen, and uh, you know, so we're going to focus on the divisions that uh, are we we have depth in or that we want to continue to grow to can to continue to build. Was it the lack of depth that? Um 
the lack of depth in heavyweight that 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 uh, was the backbreaker that said, okay, we're going to get rid of this division and just concentrate on the lower divisions. Well, I think we still had uh, a good amount of uh, heavyweights, uh, but um, you know that was decided, and uh, you know Showtime was okay with it. So uh, it is uh, the future for Strikeforce to be without a heavyweight division. And uh, you know what? I'm okay with it because we're going to keep putting on great fights and we still have some amazing athletes and uh, we're going to keep building some more athletes. Uh, one more question before I let you go. Who's, who's best fit to uh, face the winner, Cormier and uh, Barnett? Boy, that hasn't been determined yet. Uh, so uh, you can ask me one more question because I don't have an answer for that one. <laughs> How's my hair look? It looks fantastic. Great. It looks really good. <laughs> but uh, you know what? Um, that's something that uh, I'll sit down with Sean and we'll talk about who maybe the candidate would be for that fight. But uh, like I said, that, that puts an exclamation point on our, our heavyweight tournament efforts and you know, kind of puts a stamp to it. And then uh, you know, the heavyweight division can go to the UFC. Scott Coker, thank you for talking with MMAWeekly.com today. Thank you very much.